Hey, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about how to create a curved arch or a chain link or a pipe bend or whatever. And also, I want to show the issues I ran into while making these objects and how you can avoid them or fix them if the same thing happens to you. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing I want to cover is probably the most common thing you would want to create, which is a curved arch. So here I have a simple column and I'm going to hit shift D and create a duplicate and then right click and snap it back to its origin. And now I'll move it over a distance of 1.5 meters. And then I'll shift select the other column, right click and choose join. And now that I've duplicated and joined the two columns, I'll hit control A and apply all transforms to make sure the rotation, scale and location are all reset. And this will ensure that I won't get any funky weirdness happening as I move forward. And this is something you should get in the habit of doing on any model you're working on. Before you start applying modifiers or beveling edges or any type of editing, because weird things can happen if your transforms are not reset. Also, I'm going to come up here to the top and click this little down arrow and enable face orientation. So I can make sure I don't have any faces that are flipped inside out, which you can see right here, I have these red faces. So to fix this, I just need to switch to edit mode, select these faces, and then right click and go to mesh and then flip normals. And now everything is correct and ready to move forward. So to create the arch, I want to select these two faces, then hit Control E and choose Bridge Edge Loops. Or if you don't like remembering all these keyboard commands, you can come up here to the Edge menu and you can find the same option here, Bridge Edge Loops. So now the faces have bridged, but they're flat. So you'll want to come down here to this menu and increase the number of cuts. I'll set this to 30 and that will create the arc. Now, one issue you might run into is if your interpolation is set to blend surface, you'll get something like this, which is obviously not good. So if this happens, just switch to blend path and that will fix the problem. And while I have this menu open, it's worth mentioning some of the other options that are available, like smoothness. If you adjust this value up or down, it will flatten or elongate the arch. Another interesting option is twist. If I set this to 30, you see I can turn this arch into some kind of modern art sculpture or something. And you also have this profile factor, which will allow you to bulge out the midsection of the arch or reduce it down. So that's about it for creating an arch. Next, I have these cylinders and I want to connect them. So I'll do the same thing as before. Apply all transforms and I still have face orientation on and I don't see any red faces. So it looks like I'm good to continue. So as before, I'll select these two faces and then control E and choose bridge edge loops and like before the curve starts out flat but now you'll see that when i increase the number of cuts the curve is looping in the wrong direction and that's because the interpolation is set to blend path for this situation it needs to be set to blend surface And now I'll bridge the faces on the other end. And I have interpolation set to blend surface already, so it's working fine. But if I switch to blend path, 
it tries to create this weird twisted curve. So just remember to set the interpolation to blend surface when you're working with cylinders. Now the last thing I want to show you are these two cylinders, which would be for a 90 degree pipe bend. So as before, apply all transforms and check for flipped normals. Then select the two faces, control E and bridge edge loops. I'll set the number of cuts to 20. And now I have a connection, but it looks kind of weird. It's not smooth, so I just need to adjust the smoothness slider until it smooths out the curve and I get something that looks about right. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.